as we welcome you all to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance. This is a huge win tonight, and that's what we said in the pregame. You said it, Jim Salisbury said it, we all agreed. They had a bear down and win this game yeah. after getting the stuffing beat out of them last night. And it was a must win situation, and quite frankly, you go to, into that eighth inning at 0 0, all of a sudden, a three run home run by uh, Guerrero, and then you're thinking to yourself, oh, there's no way. And then JT sparks them again. It, it's, it's been that kind of combo. I mean, when, when you look at the Phillies, they had 12 hits tonight. One extra base hit it was that home run by JT. And I, I, resiliency. I will, give, I will give them all the credit in the world for resiliency, pushing through on this one. They very easily could have packed it up. When, when, it went, when they went down 3-0, I mean, when, when you really think about it in the long run, they haven't had a lead since that Sir Anthony blown save in Atlanta. How bad is that? Five days ago. That's been a long time for, to go without a lead in Major League Baseball. That, that's rough to go through. Well, that was a huge hit right there. A nice day for Veerling, five for five on the night. A nice bouncer there, just chop it up the middle. Nobody can get it there. Hit Beautiful. them where they're not. Let's go to the booth and check in with John Kruk, who called tonight's game, of course, with Tom McCarthy. John, thanks for being with us. You know, this was so special because they battled the whole way. I don't know if I felt that about this team last night. I, it just seems like they didn't have the grit they normally do, but it certainly was back and forth tonight, John. Yeah, well, last night they got an 18 spot dropped on them. It's, yep. it's, it, yeah, that's a tough one to say, oh, no, we're going to fight through this and come back and win this game. Uh, no chance, but uh, tonight was special. I mean, it was special, and, and, and I love that th these young kids are rising to the occasion. You know, this is September playoff baseball right now. All these games now are playoff games. If you want to get in, you have to pay, play these games like they're playoff games, and these young kids are stepping up for the Phillies right now and helping with the, you know, carry the load, uh, you know, with some of the, the veteran guys in the middle of the lineup who are struggling. Did you feel like these two teams are kind of really identical in the way they're going about their season right now? I'm watching, I'm watching the Blue Jays, and they were having trouble doing the little things like the Phillies had been recently. Their bullpen struggling a little bit. Phillies bullpen struggling a little bit. It looks like you're watching mirror images. Yeah, it, it, it really did. And both teams swing aggressive too. I, you know, first pitch they're hacking. I mean, you saw, uh, you know, Teoscar Hernandez. On David Robertson, you know, he's he, or uh, yeah, two o no, slider, Bilotti, Bilotti, yeah, the the two o slider that was you know foot outside, <laughs> but you know he, he swung at it, but you know how can you say anything? We've seen that too from our guys, uh, you know, swinging at a bad pitch ahead in the count, but uh, you know again, uh, they do seem like they mirror each other a lot. Uh, these two teams with the uh, you know the starting pitching bullpen. And offense, it, it, you know, both teams have really good offenses when they're clicking. Just the Phillies middle of the lineup right now besides JT hasn't been clicking. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, let me ask you about the the bullpen because when it didn't look so good, I was going to say, ask you, is the bullpen gassed? Now I'll just ask you, what, what do you think the state of the pen is at this point in the season with 14 left? Well, who's pitching tomorrow? Ranger. Nola? Rangers Ranger. pitching tomorrow. Ranger against Freed, right? Freed, yes. Yeah, Ranger better – he better go deep because that, that bullpen's got to be worn out. But, but, you know, that's what a team like Toronto does. You know, they score runs. They, they swing the bat. They put balls in play. They don't strike out a whole lot. They're going to wear on you. And then when you have a starter who, um, you know, you know he's only going to go four at the most, and then Syndergaard came in and did a good job. Um, you know, you, you had a feeling that the bullpen was going to get – going to get worn out just you know going into extra innings only one extra inning thank goodness but um, you know like I said tomorrow Ranger better be he better be locked in tomorrow and match free pitch for pitch because it, it they're not gonna be a lot of bullpen help out there presented by the Tri-State Toyota Dealers Association and as you look at these numbers Ricky Bo know that the Phillies with a loss would have been a game and a half up on the wall. They would have been closer to out of the playoffs yeah, still, than to the Padres. That's I, not the case now. I still think that half game uh, where they where they have the tiebreaker is going to be fine. It'll keep the Phillies because I look at that as two and a half, but it's actually three right now. Yeah. Plus you're up three in the loss column. I think that's more important than anything else. Two up in the win column. I, I, I just I just look at it. I I, did, I don't think they are really in danger of 
quote unquote missing the playoffs. I think if they would have lost tonight and then gone in and, and got waxed by the Braves, then I would have started getting nervous. I have a feeling this could be a little bit of a rollover. I want I want this game to be a rollover for them. I, we, we say this a lot during the season that maybe this momentum could carry over. This team has not been a team to carry momentum very well, though. That's the one thing that's a little bit concerning. But I, I, I will let, let's go over some positives here. You think about getting Wheeler back. Mm -hmm. That's huge. He looked good. Noah Syndergaard did all right tonight. He sure Coming did. out of the bullpen. That was not, six innings worth. Yeah, not that that's anything, but the at, at least he could piggyback somebody if, if you need that uh, at, here at some point in the last couple weeks. Um, you look at the younger guys in the lineup. I mean, to see Veerling get five hits is outstanding. Uh, JT continues his tear. So there's a lot of good things that are going on. Uh, bullpen wise, I wouldn't say it was good. Uh, and, and in all honesty, when you give up, what, seven walks? And I'm, I, and I'm not putting seven Syndergaard, walks. I'm not putting Syndergaard in there because I look at those two as almost a double starter today. Um, but seven walks out of the bullpen, you can't have that. You have to start challenging some, some people every once in a while because Crocky was talking about Teoscar Hernandez. He swung at a pitch that wasn't even close. I mean, I don't know what these guys think nowadays or what would be your thought process to go up there and swing at a 2-0 pitch that isn't even close to the plate. But he helped out uh, Bilotti in that type of situation. And to go even further, you end up hitting a missile up the middle. It gets caught by Gene, a great play by Gene. Doubles him up at, at second base. I mean, that saved the ball game. But you can't keep giving these free passes out of the bullpen. That's my only concern right now is that bullpen of the Phillies is beat up. They are. And we said it a couple weeks back when the starters weren't going deep into games and the bullpen had to eat up innings. That's where it started, and it's not going to end because you're looking at only, what, two weeks left in the season. You know, there's, there's, and there's no, a double header there's no in there, real, too. Yeah, and there's no real rest for anybody. Reese has got to start kicking in gear. Let's face it. When Reese gets going, it's a lot easier to score runs. When Harper gets going, a lot easier to score some runs. Those guys have not found a consistent flow. Uh, Reese with the with the wrist or the hand injury with the, when he was hit by the pitch, and Bryce since he's been back, he's pulling off of a lot of baseballs. Hoskins and Harper 0 for 9 tonight, and Bryce Harper since his return mm -hmm. from the IL on August 20. Sixth is batting 220. 220 for Bryce Harper. He's got two yeah. home runs in that time. Let's hear from Rob Thompson on tonight's win. Dropping in the eighth and then the comeback like that. Just what's it again against Duke, you guys? Yeah, it's par for the course, I think, with this group. They just they just continue to fight and and come back in games and, and put good at bats on people, you know. We could have shut down right there. Mr. Anthony gives it. Well, Sauter makes a tough error. Um, you know, he thought that he saw that um, Springer slipped out of the box. Um, until he saw that, he was definitely going to first base. And then he tried to force the out at second base, and the ball just kind of slipped out of his hands. And then Sir Anthony gives up the three run homer. And, and um, you know, they could have, that could have been it. But these guys keep fighting. And and I'm proud of him for that. Did you almost sense some like positive desperation in that bottom of the eighth on your team's part? Like uh, yeah, I mean, they put together good at bats, and when JT hit the home run, it was just kind of like uplifting to everybody, you know. Um, yeah, we put good at bats on him, and and Schwarber come, came through with a big hit, and then Veerling gets five hits back to back five. Five for five nights. I don't know when the last time that ever happened, but um, yeah, it was, it was a really good night. It looked like Guthrie came in the game late and, and it ends up giving you, I mean, three really, really good at bats. Yeah, I mean, what did you see those at bats? He's, uh, he's cool as a cucumber, man. He, he's got ice in his veins. He, I'm, I'm really, really happy with where he's at because he's, he's really low key. Nothing bothers him. Um, you know, the, the bat in the in the tenth inning when he walked. You know, he just he was, he just looked like he knew what he was doing. Yeah. You, know? you think it's kind of fitting that um, it was the younger guys that helped kind of guide you guys to a win tonight because they've stepped up so much. Yeah, it's happened a lot, you know, and and um, and that's what that's what they need to do, you know, because the big boys sometimes. That you can't rely on them all the time. And uh, those guys have come through over and over and over again, and I'm proud of them. Kind of, kind of concerning 
concerning point here with Dominguez? Just the command hasn't been there. Here? Yeah, it's just command, and uh, you know, the velocity's there. So I, I think you know, as time goes on, um, he'll be fine. I really do. I believe that. Outstanding. I, I don't know the last time I saw 98 out of wheels. So um, that's huge. It really is. Looked like his secondary stuff was a little bit, you know, not on like it normally is, but the, but the fastball velocity and command was really good. Yeah. Well, he, Syndergaard was just keeping going because he had, he had played catch before the game. And then he just wanted to keep going. He knew that it was more pitch count than it was up and down. So the pitch count was 55. Um, what's that? It, it, well, the actual pitch count didn't, but his, we set it at 55. Robertson and Bilotti, I mean, just, there was a lot of right place at the right time. In those, yeah. In those innings, do you, do you feel like you get a win after losing five straight and the stakes? Being what they are, do you feel like you've kind of weathered the storm here and, and, and survived a little bit? Well, we'll see you tomorrow. I mean, you know, tomorrow's a new day, and we got to go get them tomorrow. But you know, um, we got—I think we got seven walks out of our bullpen, so we, we got to calm that down. But um, but those guys did all right in, in high-pressure situations. What do you think the impact of a team of a win like this could be, um, just from a momentum standpoint? Well, I mean, they say momentum's as good as your tomorrow starter, and we got Ranger going. We feel pretty good about that. So it's a good club coming in here. So we have to play well. We have to play like we've been playing. Um, swing the bats, get some runs, get good pitching. Um, you know, and that's what it's all about, really. It's just a new day tomorrow. Marshall Yeah. So. Freed's throwing tomorrow, so he he won't start tomorrow. But um, he was an emergency guy today. I'm sure that we can use him for sure tomorrow. But because it's Freed, we'll give him an extra day and make sure that thing's okay. But he, he'll be able to play tomorrow. Rob Thompson talking Brandon Marsh right there at the end. Magic number over the Brewers for the Fighting Phillies 11. And man, oh man, Shevitz, they fought tonight. By the way. Phillies will finish no worse than 500 now. 81st win tonight for the second straight season. They haven't had consecutive seasons being at least 500 since 03 through 12. And, and to, to me, the, the one thing that really sticks out to me, if you watch this game and you enjoy pitching, it was so interesting because when you watched Wheeler, he was side to side. He was one side to the other side dominating with fastballs. You watched Gaussman out there. The one thing you saw is up and down. What was he doing? Throwing the split down, fastballs up above the zone. Split down, fastballs up above the zone. I thought, I thought it was a great way if, if you're a younger kid, if, you're, if you were watching this game, although who knows what time it is right now. Anyways, <laughs> but if you're watching that game early on, you saw two completely separate ways of pitching. And both ways were good. But Wheeler, outstanding. I liked it. His arm looked live. That's the most important thing. Explain what he meant. He, he said, and you mentioned it, I threw a lot of fastballs tonight, couple off-speed pitches, but mostly I spiked them. Yeah, he wasn't getting a good feel on them, which, which number one. What does that one, mean, he no, spiked them? Well, number one, you'll see a lot of them go in the dirt, or he doesn't, or he'll pull them to the side. Oh, he spiked but them But most in the of the dirt. time, it's just spiked. It means it's, it's he either held on to it too long, and he's pulling it down into the dirt, or, you know, I I mean, sometimes you just don't have a feel. When you come back, especially a curveball is the hardest one to get a feel for. You know, the slider, you're just kind of staying on the side of it and then kind of wrist action through the end of it. But uh, if you don't have that feel for it and you don't have the same arm slot for it, if you remember, how many times do I go up there, up to the big board, and I'll say, he always lets go from the same slot. Yeah. Well, his slot may have been a little bit off. Got it, got it. So, Zach Wheeler is one hero for tonight's game, but the end of game hero certainly is Matt Vierling, the pride of Notre Dame. He's five for five tonight with a walk-off. First Philly to do that since Go at Irish. least 1906. Here's Matt Vierling in the clubhouse. Wins a game like that for a team that really needed one? Yeah, no, it, it, don't, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, I think the biggest thing is is getting that win. Um, definitely needed it. Gives a little momentum. 
uh, going to this next stretch of games. I think we really needed that one, and we grinded all night. So um, all the next, all these next games, I, th- I think we're kind of that same mindset, just grinding and and trying to get a win. Was it kind of after they take that three-run lead in the top of the eighth, going into the bottom of the eighth, was there almost like a feeling of desperation in the dugout? Because you guys, I mean, you came out with intensity, you got the home run, you tied the game. Yeah, no. We, we, I mean, we, we kept the message the same the whole night. Just keep crying and stay positive. Um, we went down three. It was, I mean, we got in there and everybody was still positive. So, um, yeah, just it, we, our team is really good at staying positive and trying to trying to look at the bright side of things. And and uh, you know, at any point in time with our lineup, we can we got a chance to tie the game. So when we went down three nothing, uh, the really it wasn't really desperation, but we just got to put some hits together. And JT really started with that home run. How difficult it is, though, to stay positive. I mean, you had lost five in a row. You're down yeah. nothing with six outs to go. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard. It's but it's a choice, right? I mean, you got to choose to be positive. You got to choose to look at the bright side of things and and keep on grinding. So um, we could have very easily just kind of kind of just not done that and kind of kind of had some desperation about us. But um, no, we stayed positive and, and we kept going. Thompson said that um, Marcia's status was kind of uncertain going into tonight. So how much notice did you even have that you would? Middle of BP, it told me I was playing. So, um, but I knew I knew after what happened last night there could be a chance. Um, so they told me to kind of be on guard for that. But um, yeah, it was it was in the middle of the, in the middle of BP. Had a game like this one in a big RBI hit for you. Just, just how special was this for you though? Especially contributing in a pennant chase like this, a playoff chase like this. Yeah, uh, for me it's huge. Um, Get some confidence going down the stretch. Um, definitely found some holes tonight. Didn't hit all the balls hard, but they found them. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm just I'm happy for the team. Happy we got the win. Happy that I could contribute to the win. Um, and hopefully that carries on. Where, where did that ball hit in front of the plate? I mean, it seemed like you hit it. I mean, I, I hit that thing hard, but I hit about two feet in front of the home plate, and it just jumped right up the middle. So found a hole. As soon as you hit it, did you know it was going to go through? Like just you know. Yeah, I mean, I hit it hard. Um, they were playing in, so um, made the swing, saw it go up, and, and yeah, knew, knew immediately. And what's that feeling like, you know, reaching first, seeing the run score, getting mobbed by your teammates, first walk-off hit? It, it doesn't get much better than that, seeing everybody come out and how fired up they were, especially how things have been going. So hopefully we can carry that on. Seeing so that Milwaukee one, you guys knew they won even before the game. What did that do to the mindset of the team going out there? You know, it, it really didn't. We really didn't talk about it at all. Um, I know everybody's looking at it. Um, we're all looking at it too, um, paying attention to it. But we we really haven't talked about it much. We just keep carrying on. I think that's a testament to the leadership in the clubhouse. Just keep on going, keep on playing. Um, and we we all knew it was there. But um, it's like every game towards the end of this stretch is like that. We got to win every game. We got to keep playing, keep grinding. So. Um, talked about how all these games going forward are like playoff games for us. So just got to keep on playing. What happened to your shirt? It got ripped. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like three buttons fell off, everything's off. So, yeah, was, was pretty good. Shirt, was it? What's that? You said it wasn't your lucky shirt, was it? No, this is the one they give me. So <laughs> hopefully they'll give me a new one and um, we get to go. Shirts and skins tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you literally. Get the car shield and get the rights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, guys, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it.